How you feeling? I got this email to my inbox today. Seriously, it took your Paul over two years to go from approximate 25% fat to what looks like 15% fat body? As a personal trainer and nutritional guidance counselor for over 40 years, oh, he didn't finish the sentence. I could have got him to that condition in less than three months. I see if extremely and limited goals are your clients, then you are doing well. Laugh my ass off. Best wishes, Sensei Tony. I have no interest in picking a fight with Tony, but what Tony did was a huge favor for me because he made me realize there's a very important topic that I need to vlog about. So thanks, Tony. Philosophies change over time with experience. When I first started out in the fitness industry, everything I did and preached was outcome based. I dieted and I exercised to lose weight and to look more attractive. Success was contingent upon how quickly I could achieve these outcomes and it didn't matter if I felt terrible during the process or if I couldn't even maintain the outcome. The most important thing was achieving the outcome as quickly as possible. When I first started helping people with diet and training, I adopted this very philosophy because it's what people wanted from me and it's because it's what I wanted from myself. But as I previously said, philosophies change over time with experience. I hit rock bottom with this approach. I ended up developing a disordered relationship with food because I was unable to succeed on any diet. Food, hunger, and my lack of willpower tormented me during every waking moment. And this made me feel terrible. I also developed a disordered relationship with working out because I believed if I didn't exercise, I would gain weight. I was willing to exercise even though it was making my back, knee, and shoulder pain worse. Everything was outcome-based. I had to burn X amount of calories, I had to complete X amount of reps and sets, and I had to lift X amount of weight. That's how I determined if my session was successful or not. So there I was compensating with all the wrong muscles and getting injured just for the sake of achieving the desired outcome of the workout. I needed these instant outcomes to feed my ego. But there was only one problem. My body felt terrible while trying to achieve the desired outcomes. Furthermore, I couldn't maintain my results. I absolutely despised looking at myself in the mirror. I would hide in baggy clothes. I couldn't stand looking at photos of myself and I hated weighing myself on the bathroom scale. I realized that everybody who was following me was also going through the same daily battles trying to achieve the desired outcome, which was to lose weight and look more attractive. You probably noticed that I titled this vlog, This Is How I Feel. Well, I felt terrible. I filmed this vlog because I want you to start asking yourself how you feel. How does the diet you're following make you feel? How did eating that piece of cheese make you feel? How did fasting for 16 hours instead of 18 hours make you feel? Did it make you feel better? How did that exercise make you feel? How did the workout make you feel? Did you feel it in the correct muscles? When I started basing my diet and training decisions on how I felt, instead of subscribing to an outcome-based philosophy, that's when things really started improving for me. It's really that simple. How does it make you feel? The answer is either good or bad. There's nothing in between. I knew that I felt bad, and that's why I changed my intent. Diet and training was no longer outcome based, but rather it was about what my body truly needed in order to feel good. And that's why I've been consistent for the past seven years. And that's why Paul has been consistent for the past two years. Because his diet and training choices are based on how he feels. It has absolutely nothing to do with his ego or how much he can bench or how quickly he can change his body composition. Paul is a beast. He is extremely self-aware. As a busy professional, he was able to seamlessly fit fasting into his lifestyle. For Paul, 
diet isn't even a blip on his radar. His relationship with food is within normal limits. Paul didn't try to rush the process. He knew he was exactly where he was supposed to be. And that's true for all of us. We are exactly where we are supposed to be right now in our journeys. I remember when Paul told me he was able to lean over the bathroom sink to shave for the first time without experiencing low back pain. That right there is a huge win. Paul is feeling good because he ditched his ego so that he could fix what wasn't feeling good. Here's another email I got to my inbox. Thanks for the info, I'm so upset. I've been doing the 16 and eight fast for two and a half weeks and weighed myself and gained one pound. Any advice? Chrissy. Chrissy, what is your intent exactly? Why did you start fasting? Was it to lose weight and look more attractive? Because my question for you is, how did fasting for the past two and a half weeks make you feel? Good or bad? Was it easier for your schedule? Did it help you keep hunger at bay? Did it prevent you from fixating on food 24 seven? Do you think you should base things on how you feel or on the outcome? For me, I base it on how I feel because the body is only capable of predicting how it will feel. It's not an outcome-based system. One pound is nothing. Maybe I need to sneeze or go poop. Maybe it's that time of the month, so I'm retaining water. Maybe I overconsumed some food, so once again, I'm retaining water. Maybe I'm stressed out about something going on in my life, so I'm in the wrong state and I'm retaining water. Just so you know, my weight fluctuates between two and three pounds on any given day. So don't be so quick to blame the fasting unless you're genuinely not feeling good with the fasting. In that case, it's not for you. Now, if you're putting pressure on yourself to do this to lose weight, well, then that's gonna create a lot of anxiety and subsequent water retention. Let me let you in on a little secret. I only lose weight and look my best when I stop fixating on the outcome of weight loss and I start focusing on how I feel. Because if I feel good, then I can be consistent. And consistency is the secret sauce. So what can you see yourself consistently doing? Because we know that's the ticket to success. So is that based on a daily feeling or is it based on a future desired outcome? I'm a certified strong fit coach. So that means, yes, I apply Carl Friston's model to everything I do. So this is a great opportunity for me to show you how we can apply this model to an example with intermittent fasting. So the other day, one of my clients told me, Sarah, I broke my fast with high glycemic carbs and then I ended up crashing and feeling terrible and sluggish for the rest of the day. Now I hate fasting. Okay, but do you really hate fasting or do you just need to change your prediction? So how do we go about changing her prediction? I told her to break her fast with low glycemic index carbs and fats. For example, a giant salad with avocado or roasted veggies with olive oil. And guess what happened? She did that and she didn't crash. So guess what happened next? This changed the way she feels about intermittent fasting. And I recommend you read the book because I explain so many different ways that you can make subtle changes so that you can change the way you feel about your experience with fasting. It's all about exploring, trial and error. Figure out what makes you feel good and what doesn't make you feel good. Stop being a victim, do something about it. Change your prediction so that you can make the world feel the way you want it to feel. Back to the first email, I know Tony said my clients have limited goals. I would like to disagree because I know firsthand just how many years of hard work it takes to learn things like pistol squats, handstands, splits in your 30s, 40s, and 50s. I want to let my splits and Strength Academy members know just how damn proud I am of you for your tenacity and your commitment to the process. I know we are kicking ass because we're getting hate mail. In conclusion, if your intent is outcome-based, and you rely on an instant physical transformation to make your ego feel good, and you are willing 
to make yourself feel like crap trying to achieve something that you cannot maintain, then let me say this to you. Who the hell hurt you? It's time to work on your core confidence so that you won't let your ego bully you into making decisions that don't make your mind or body feel very good. Don't let the fitness industry seduce you into instant results. Instant gratification never produces lasting results. Do you honestly think instant gratification is the reason why I look like this for the past seven years? Or why I was able to learn handstands and reverse levers? Hells no. My entire brand is all about delayed gratification. It's all about how you feel. It's not outcome based. It's based on what you need. So how do you feel after watching this? Do you feel like a feelionaire? Let me know in the comments below if you are guilty of pursuing things based on whether or not they yield instant outcomes. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I appreciate your support and followership all these years. Thank you for your time and attention today and for letting me be a part of your journey. Until next time.